So what I'm going to talk to you about is what has to be done. There is no way that I believe, remember there are many different types of futurists, and they have different interpretations of what the future ought to be. I'm going to tell you what I think the future ought to be. It's up to you to decide what direction the future will take. First of all, I think that the monetary system is on the way out, that is the use of money. It's been the most corrupter of all nations. And even the Bible says that the love of money is an evil thing. So is it possible to build a world without money and maintain incentive? I think it is. Let me describe the world as I see it. We must ultimately bring all the nations together and join one common project that all of the Earth's resources must become the common heritage of all the world's people. When you have few nations controlling the major resources of the world, you're going to have trouble. And all man-made laws are artificial. 90% of them don't work. Because when man makes laws like, thou shalt not steal, don't use drugs, there's still people who <laughs> use drugs. As long as there's money in it, there'll be drug sales. Now then there are people that walk around with protest signs don't cut down the forest. As long as people buy lumber from all the big lumber companies, they'll cut down the forest. Those protest signs don't mean a damn thing. What is needed is an understanding. Now, in my own country, America, stole the land of the Indians. It drove them into the dry areas. We took the best land for ourselves. We took land from New Mexico, California, and after America stole all the land it needed, it put up the sign, Thou shalt not steal. Well, you have that with England. They said the sun never sets on England. England stole, they were called conquerors of this. They stole half the earth. All nations, I think it was Mark Twain that said, there's not an acre of land belongs to its right alone. If you go back in time, you'll see the battles all over the place. We must learn how to use the earth collectively. Now here's how that works. We hope to produce a motion picture called And the World Will Be Mine, or a series for television showing how to get from here to the future. And I want to tell you what empty words are. When a person gets up and says, we have to learn to live together in peace and solve our problem collectively. That doesn't tell you what to except that the needs are good. When a scientist says a fish travels thousands of miles instinctively, that tells you nothing. The word instinct does not describe how the fish do it. You say, well, birds build nests instinctively. They could say birds build nests by hula hula. It doesn't tell you how. So as long as they don't tell you how, it's safe. Okay? That is, don't rock the boat. Don't rock the economic boat. That's what they're talking about. So I'm saying this. The economy of money has always been corrupt. We used to say, say no to drugs. As long as there's money in selling drugs, people will sell drugs to people that need drugs. As long as there's money in war, it'll be big business. When they draft the young man into the army, they should conscript all the war industry so no one makes a buck out of war. Then it's real. War is big business. It always has been big business. A friend of mine that worked for an aircraft company years ago was a pilot in World War I. He told me he flied over crop munition works eight times and had orders not to bomb it. He was an American pilot. And he couldn't understand why he was not permitted to bomb it. He drove with nice weather and all that. After the war, 
there was a book come out called Arms and the Men. It was uh, an American corporation that held, that had holding it in the German company. And so, if you bombed it, you threatened American holding. So they built a lot of bombing trucks that were very high off the ground, and they tend to turn over a lot. And the army told people that they built it high to clear the shrubbery. But if you do men that mechanically behind and women, there's a ball between the wheels and the back of the car called the differential housing. It's one ball. So you can't clear the ground with that ball down there. So why did they build it so high? They built it two feet above standard loading platforms, so after the war, they wouldn't walk off to the north. You'd have to buy new cars. You understand that? It's corrupt to me. When you build a lot of airplanes, and you take all the Japanese islands in the South Pacific, that sells a lot of airplanes, a lot of tanks, and a lot of other things. Whereas real war, you build a bomber, and you knock out the power projects in Germany, the dams and the generators. That shuts down all the aircraft tankers. You don't shoot souls on the island. As long as those factories go and keep turning out munitions and operate all the other factories, the war is dishonest. All wars have always been dishonest. They have always been big business. I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. Now, there's a lot of billionaires in war. America today, I want you to think about this, has 300 submarines. Each one has more destructive power than all the wars in history. Now, where can you go with that? What can you do with that? Nothing. They built a place for senators and congressmen under a mountain. In case we have nuclear war, they have a place to go. There's enough food there for six months. What do you come out to? A burnt out radioactive world? What is this thing for? How stupid can you be? I do a session called The Limitless Dimensions of Human Stupidity. And that's what you're dealing with. All nations, as long as you have politics, I want to try to say this slowly, politicians can contribute nothing. To the world. It's the Edisons, the Marconis, well, the Marconi, they, they stole it from Nikolai Tesla. And the Teslas and all the people that made the technology that makes your house, the lights, the generators, the flying machines, the automobiles, it's technology that moves the world forward, not politics. Politicians don't understand ecology. They tell you to write your congressman all the time. Why don't you write your congressman? Tell him what you want. What kind of people are they? When you fly in an airplane, you don't have to write your pilot and say you've been flying at an angle for three hours straight up. He knows the business. You don't have to write your navigator and say, I thought we're going to Hawaii, that's the iceberg. You don't have to write them because they know their business. When you travel on an ocean line, the captain knows where he's going, the navigators know where they're going, but politicians do not know where they're going. They never did know where they're going, because they're not technically trained. They say, they put up signs, say no to drugs. As long as there's money in drugs, people will sell it. You understand that? Most man-made laws are about nothing. They never work. They said, don't steal, don't take things that don't belong to you. Do you know what the new definition of a criminal was? I better tell you what the old one was. A person that takes something from you without your permission. That was the old definition of a criminal. The new one has changed. One who's caught. Thanks. Okay. So, if you want a world without war, without killing, without murder, without serial killers, without mentally disturbed people, you have to redesign your schools to something else. I'm going to try to tell you what that is. You have to teach children science and technology. Now let me tell you one aspect of it. 
Well, you bring up little boys and little girls with Jack and the Beanstalk. And on the way, Dickie Bear met a cow, Boo Boo said the cow. On the way, they met a sheep. All that crack fills the heads with tears. Unreal. Cinderella touches a white mouse and makes a horse. Well, what kind of rage do you think that produces in me? What happens to a girl that worked for 15 years typing for a corporation? You know what she's got up here when she gets out? Corporate letters. Never learned how to live, how to find meaning in her own life. So we want to redesign the way society works. Let me tell you, don't let that scare you. There were movies made, Brave New World, 1984, Atlas Shrugged, to turn you against a planned economy. They say, well, if you give people all the things for nothing, they won't think and they won't work. All of you people were born in, in a country that already had airplanes, electric lights, television. A lot of you, you didn't work on it. You got it for nothing. And it doesn't spoil you. Giving people things for nothing, the earth is the most beautiful gift we have. And we've dumped a crack into the oceans. The United States Army, about 40 years ago, dumped 60 tons of nerve gas off the coast of Miami. Now, it was just done by the Army. Now, the Army, if they had soldiers, were very obedient. But if you love the country and you know how to think, you don't do those things. Because soldiers are killing machines. They're men taught to kill. And they're men who feel good about killing. Some people say, well, I wonder if the soldier sleeps well or not. He sleeps very well. If you give him metal, if he flies over a village and blows him up, he feels good because he's told that's the enemy. Everybody's the enemy on earth. Because everybody's corrupt on earth. As long as you send yourself to a corporation, a broadcasting company, and you talk about this is the greatest toothbrush in the world, this is the greatest toothpaste, you're a prostitute. You're selling yourself. Now, years ago, somebody wrote a book called A Hundred Million Guinea Pigs. How many of you have heard of it? Gee, maybe two people or more. A Hundred Million Guinea Pigs was a book that sold all over America. It was a bestseller. And the public demanded a department called the Pure Food and Drug Administration to look over the drug companies so they don't peddle a lot of crap out there or false things. And that book sold all over the place and that administration was good. But today, the people in charge of the Pure Food and Drug Administration are people who used to work in the drug companies. It always becomes corrupt, always. Now, when I was a kid, we had a terrible depression. Fifteen million people were sleeping in every empty lot. And I looked at them and I thought, gee, the sun was out, there's stuff in store windows, but the banks failed. And people bought homes and cars, and they couldn't pay them off. And they were kicked out. And the farmers said to me, I've got corn, but nobody has any money to buy it. And they were kicked off the farms. And the veterans of World War One were promised $600 to start life anew. But the government was broke, so it gave me IOUs. And the veteran said, well, I can't eat that. So about 10,000 veterans marched on Washington, demanding their $600 to start life anew. And they were sleeping all over the Capitol grounds. And the government said, we don't like that. Get them out of here. And that was Douglas Nagarpa, who had the army throw tear gas at veterans of World War I. Now, if the government really cared about people, they wouldn't outsource. They don't care about you. They outsource because people work for less money. So why should they give a damn about you? So if you own a factory and you buy and build a playground for the children or the women that work for you, and you take out some medical care, health care for the people that work for you, but he outsourced it to China. You can't say in business if you do good things. No one's going to invest in your company if you do humane things. So when you go to church or a synagogue or wherever you go, to a temple, and you pray for the good life, 
to give lip service to the teachings of Muhammad, Allah, Jesus, all lip service. Dear God, always telling God what to do. Remember, people that believe in God, that man makes God in his own image. A guy that gets angry, creates floods, burns people, they get diseased. When the bubonic plague swept the earth, if it, it is the will of Allah. But science says, I don't know what makes the plague. I really don't know. That's the first thing you have to learn to say, to be honest, I don't know. And they come out that fleas on rats bring the plague in, not the curse of Allah. You understand what I'm saying? That was great, Allah, a thousand years ago. But today, we now know what makes time and way. We know what distorts human behavior. And I want to tell you about a guy like, uh, I don't know if you know him, but there were, there were people that were serial killers that they cut the heads off people, put them in the refrigerator, dumb, remember? And then before now, there was a guy named Albus Vick. He ate 45 children. And the public wanted to tear him to pieces. And a psychiatrist named Worker said, don't kill him. I want to try to find out what made him that way and try to eradicate the conditions that produce that people. You don't put people in jail. That's the wrong way to go. That's the old way of doing things. Now, what made him that way? I'm going to try to tell you what made him that way. A little bit of that. When he was about about eight years old, Albert Fish was sitting in bed with an erection, touching his penis. And his mother was an old time Baptist, and she said, You will burn in hell, touching that part of your You will burn eternally. She scared the hell out of the kid. And at two o'clock in the morning, he was screaming. He stuck needles into his temples because he didn't want to go to hell. And he used to take minority kids into the woods and try to cut their genitals off to save them from going to hell. What do you think a soldier is? A soldier is a guy that sees movies of Japanese with crooked teeth, bayoneting a baby, a woman that's pregnant, and they enlist. The whole business of war is propaganda and poison. You know how Turks are. You know the Irish are nothing but brothers, and the Italians are nothing but gangsters, and the Jews are nothing but sisters. And the Polacks are big dumb people that you get to clean out the cellar. So as long as that goes on, you have a separation of people. And so all people need clean air, clean water, arable land, and a relevant education. Until that day, you're going to have trouble in the world. When the nations of the world join together like the states, before the states joined together, they used to fight each other. They were border dispute continuously. And when all the states joined in the United States, that was the end of the militias. They disappeared. Now, if you want harmony in the world, all the nations must join together because they spend money on defense systems. The cost of World War II could have housed everybody on Earth, wiped out the slums, build hospitals all over the world, send kids to college free. Well, how can you be so stupid as to bomb cities, bomb children? And there's some women that don't believe that they ought to have a right to an abortion. You don't see them saying, stop the war, because they're killing pregnant women, children, and everybody else. They worry about abortion. War really kills people. So what kind of world do you want? Well, the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions in Santa Barbara said, don't ask people what kind of world they want. Tell them the kind of world they ought to want. Now, I'm going to try to tell you that. We need a world based upon scientific studies, not opinions. First, we have to do a survey of all the resources of the Earth by all the nations of the world. And so when you do your survey of how many cases of cystic fibrosis, retinal disease, heart disease, kidney disease, tuberculosis, and the available resources, 
You design your culture based on the carrying capacity of the earth, not the opinion of some politician. Let me say that again. As you do a survey, if your population exceeds the carrying capacity of a given area, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have starvation, malnutrition, and all the other problems. So the earth's carrying capacity determines what we can build. Now, you have to educate people to understand that. If you fail to do that, they'll go right on doing what they want to do. Now, a lot of you people believe that people can think and reason. That's another myth put out there. We can't. We only think within the context of the way we're brought up. An Eskimo never dreams of walking on a Florida beach with palm trees. He can't. If he must have seen movies, you understand? You can't imagine anything outside of the way you were brought up. Like a horse. If the barn burns, the horse runs out, but then he runs back in, because it's the only security a horse ever knew. So people do not behave intelligently. There's no such thing as an intelligent person. If you don't understand that, an intelligent electrical engineer of 75 years ago can't get a job today. So what was intelligent then is not intelligent now. Then they tell you, well, at least we're civilized. We're not. If there's war, prisons, police, and a military system, you're not civilized. Being civilized is an ongoing process. You're learning more every year. When you fall in love at 16, and you fall in love at 35, it's different. But you're undergoing change. And the word love really has little or no meaning. So somebody said to me, uh, well, didn't you love your mother? I said, in what area? My mother was a bigot and a racist. So I didn't love her that Do all of you love everything you've ever done in life? Of course not. There are things you've done that you're sorry for, and you don't consider it proper. What if you live with a replica of yourself? How long would you be together? Think about that. Okay? So, sometimes you love yourself, sometimes you don't. And if you're married, sometimes you love your husband, sometimes you don't. So, it's not an absolute thing. So, a brilliant person of a given time will not fit another time. The cities that I've designed will be a straitjacket to the kids of the future. They'll design their own cities. But if you want to stack your fresco and put it in front of the cities, yes. If you make a statue of Christo, put it in front of the city, it holds people back. You want them to think of new cities, better ways of doing things. And some people tell you that Christo is the utopia, and he believes in utopia. I don't. There are no final frontiers. Every city you design can be improved. Every television set can move on. There's no best. There's the best we know how to turn out up to now. So I didn't want you to think that eventually you come to utopia. You never arrive at utopia. Now, what kind of world do I picture? Actually, the world I picture will be based upon the methods of science. Not science, but the methods of science. Applied to society. Where we build not thousands of different types of vacuum cleaners, maybe four or five. The automobile factories will close down and we'll build cities with adequate transportation to any place in that city by verbal behavior or dial where you want to go. The answer is driving cars is ridiculous. All these people on the highways come in jam. In Turkey, you won't be able to move in another two years if you continue to be able to allow automobiles on the highway. Turkey was never planned. It's just a city that grew up all over the place. And it's, it would cost too much to fix it up. It's easier and cheaper, cheaper to level all the old cities except keeping a few as museum cities to show other people what we used to live in. The way the world is today doesn't permit that. So they dare not breathe. They become kicked into conformity. And I'm sorry to say this about an architect, but they don't build a whole new world. They can't. They don't have an air conditioner hanging out of every window. In the future, you have cool air tied to old buildings. 
all the rooftops are photoelectric. All the roadways and piping are intact, so you generate electricity. There are no signs, danger, slippery when wet, drive carefully. We put a brace in the highway so it's not slippery when wet. That's what the future's about, solving problems. Now here took all the soldiers that you send to war and taught them how to think, be creative, all of them. What a wonderful world we have instead of killing people. When you kill people, that only produces resentment and hatred for you. Years later, you'll pay for it. The metaphysicians call that the law of karma. What you do will reflect back at you. So I'm saying this. We are capable today of building a world so that people don't live on handouts anymore. They will live better than the wealthiest people today. The world I talk about. It's not a bunch of people reduced to nothing. It's a very high standard of living. And if you don't understand that, the middle class American today lives better than kings. They have air conditioning in their car, television. No king ever had that. And you know a laptop? I'm sure some of you have a laptop. Will you raise your hand? Okay. All right. Did you know that 10 years ago it would cost $10 million what your laptop does today? It puts you in touch with the world. Now the chips are getting smaller, smarter, and faster. And your cameras today do not require film. What would happen if we took all the soldiers and made figures and intentions of them to solve problems, not just kill? You want to solve a problem and you want to bridge the difference between nations. Well, how do you do that? You do it by getting all the nations to join a common project. All people need clean air, clean water, arable land, good education. So you start with the area you have in common. Don't touch their religion. Don't try to force your values on other nations. It won't work. So you join in the areas that you have in common. Then eventually, through knowledge and education, most people will let go of the old traditions that are no longer valid. So I'm going to try to show you at this time a film which we made for Saudi Arabia. That's just to get it our foot in the door. They're a money-oriented culture. So we produce the film to get our foot in the door so they say, okay, they said, Fresco, we want you to come to Saudi Arabia, and we want you to design new cities, a big park, the tallest buildings in the world. And I said, what do you want the tallest buildings in the world for? We want to be better than America. Well, that's a sickness. That's not what they wanted. So when we were invited to Dubai, what they did is they took us around, Roxanne and myself, and they showed us a big desalinization plant. Now, the vines are the desert. Now, so what do you do with the water? We build a water theme park where people slide down there. How stupid can you be? Here's a desert country building theme parks, and they built two artificial islands for tourists. But the recession is here, and the artificial islands aren't working. And they built these big houses for a million dollars a piece, and people bought them. So they built houses in between. They built a gigantic swamp. And the guy that designed Palm Island told me he was thinking, private. That what you call for is a resource-based economy, not money. We have enough resources to build anything we want. If you don't understand me, if you were stranded on an island with ten million dollars, gold, diamonds, and jewels, if the island had no water, no fish, no arable land, you have nothing. Money represents nothing. What is important, and a lot of people think, well, maybe if we put ethical people in government, that would work. <coughs> Even if you had the most ethical people all over the world, if you ran out of resources, be lying, cheating, stealing, and war. It isn't ethical people that we need. What we need is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources to the benefit of all the world's people. Nothing less will work. You'll always have your wars going on as long as you have separate nations. And separate nations will bring up loyalty. Everybody pledges allegiance to the flag. I feel we owe so much to people from all over the world that made enormous contributions. But to believe in your country alone 
but not including all the other countries, they're going to keep you separated and trouble. So we have to share the Earth's resources. But where did we get our resources? We stole it. Where did we get it? We stole it. So you go back to the history of the world, there's nothing but one war after the other, stealing things from one another. So I think the only solution is to work toward a unified world society. Now, if you have some questions, I'll take them off. Don't be polite. That would include taking care of the environment, restructuring the oceans, cleaning out the radioactive tanks. We, we put radioactive material and dump that into the oceans too. And the way we mistreated the land is going to take years to clean up the Middle East. We use radioactive waste which we launched in on that area. And that's going to produce deformities in people for thousands of years. Again, how stupid can you be? With ingenuity and technology, we can solve all these problems. They are easy to solve. They're not difficult. Even children crossing the street, we have a way where the pavement is joined together like cones. And when the child wants to press the button, the red line goes on the pavement, says Joe, so no car can hit a kid. We don't want signs drive carefully. We don't want signs, uh, you know, the in life you take may be your own. We want to make highways where cars can't hit one another. It's very easy to do. You put proximity devices on cars. And when you're 40 feet away, the brakes go off. So if I got mad at you, I couldn't even drive into your car. So you see, today, if something's wrong with your car, you bring it in the garage. In the future, you turn two handles down, pull the engine out like a dresser drawer, shove in the courtesy engine, and lock it, and you take off. What are you hurting up a whole car for to change a $5? You know, if the car companies had to service their own cars, believe me, they would do that. You had one thing in your home years ago that never broke down, and you didn't know it. But it was designed not to break down, it was a telephone. You can throw it on the ground for those homes you buy today. The telephone company didn't want to have to service their phone, so they designed them not to break down. And they worked for a year. So you see, we could design things not to break down. Magnetic trains that float off the tracks, and any human being can see that whole set of trains. It doesn't require lubrication, it can't go off the tracks, there's no ball bearings that wear out. There are so many things we can turn out that would make life wonderful for everybody, not just a few. And so there'd be sailboats, all kinds of things for your use. You just don't own anything, but you use everything.